video go. Okay, go. It's so easy to get caught up in all the rushing and trying and the endless daily details. Washing the dirty dishes, throwing another load of laundry into the dryer, another email, another notification as we rush to make our morning commute. What if we break away from the mundane distractions of daily life and make time to refocus on what really matters? To take a step back and ask, why are we doing this? What is holding us back? What if our gifts could be used for a higher purpose? For something beyond ourselves? Many of you are using your gifts for a higher purpose, and many of us maybe don't know that we have some giftings in an area, and maybe it's like, boy, that's not even a gift, really. I mean, anybody could do what, what I'm doing. Um, is, is that Brad here, Dad, is he? Oh, okay, they must be out this weekend. They're downstairs. They're downstairs, okay. Brad is also here working tirelessly on Friday to put all this back together, so I didn't want to miss Brad. Um, but I want to say from that, hey, guys, um, there's so many ways to jump in, and hopefully we give you more ways at Lighthouse Western Church that you can jump in and grab a paintbrush, and, and even if you're not skilled. I mean, Randy will teach you, man. He knows how to do all the, all the right strokes just right, and you got to go back over it. Just trust me, I worked with him. Uh, um, if he gives you some lip, you know, to jab him or something, it's all, it's all good. It's all even. Um, find ways, Lord, help us to, to uh, find ways to get involved. Because, you know, faith without our deeds is pretty much status quo, dead. And God wants you to do something with your faith other than maybe, you know, hanging out on the, uh, the TV remote every night. What can we do to invest in other people's lives? Because listen, people are dying without Jesus. You know the anecdote. You know well, how to get there eternally. How, and next week we're going to spend more time on it. I'm just priming the pump right now. Lord, help us to figure out some things personally today so we're ready next week to receive how to go out and share our faith. Today, week number 5.5, because we didn't get the other half of last week's sermon, remember that? So, uh, I'd like to start with something funny, and uh, <clears throat> this blonde joke, here we go. I heard about three blondes who wanted to apply to be a cop, interviewing the, the with the interviewing detective, uh, he pulled out his folder and he said, to be a detective, you're going to have to be able to detect, ladies, okay? So you must be able to notice things such as distinguishing features and scars or maybe tattoos. So he stuck a photo in the face of the first blonde and he withdrew it quickly and he said, did you notice anything stand out to you? Yes, I did, she said. He only had one eye. The detective shook his head. He's like, of course you only had one eye. It was a side profile picture. You may be dismissed. So he stuck the photo in front of the second blonde and withdrew it in seconds. Did you notice anything stand out to you? And she said, yes, he only had one ear. And he just shook his head. Did you not hear what I said to the first lady? It's a side profile. You're only going to see one ear. You're dismissed. Thank you. Looked to the third lady and said, this is probably a waste of time, but I'm going to flash for the, a few seconds this photo. And do you notice anything stand out to you? The blonde said, I do. I see the man's wearing contact lenses. Now he's like, how do you know that? Because I know the man has contact lenses, but how did you see from the photo that he has contact lenses. Well, duh! With only one eye and one ear, he certainly can't wear glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I love the delay laughter on it. That's awesome. Some getting it. Somebody's going to explain that to you on the way home. And if so, you're probably blind. All right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, I was born blind, so I, I'm right there with you. I would have been saying the same thing. Contact lenses all the way, baby. All right, grab your Bible and say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert, my heart is receptive. 
I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Lord, this morning, we just need you to speak your truth, your power, your wisdom into us. Help us to experience something new and actually apply the button in your name. Amen. All right. I'm going to go back over this a moment. My wife's got the little stair steps for us where we see that Adam sinned and put us all on this leash. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we're all in the same boat. Whether you're watching Facebook Live or you're here live, we're all part of this sin thing and we need a Savior. And that's where uh, dropping the sin leash and getting that off and running a new race with God where he wants to make all things new. We walk up to that first step and that's getting to know God through salvation, getting to know God through spending time with him. There's an unavoidable change that needs to happen in our lives. Are we still doing it? Are we still making time for God? Are we doing better to hang out with our Bible life? I see some nods. Good. Are we doing better at getting our Bible and just establishing time with God? Are we doing better at this? seems so hard to listen, but when we do, something awesome happens. God wants to speak. And it's really hard when we're busy being busy. Step number three, unleash that faith into speaking to that mountain and move up in your faith. There's some mountains I know are in this room. And if there's a bunch of them that I know of in this room, there's tons that I, I don't know that you're, you're facing all kinds of different mountains. Go speak to them. Be moved in Jesus' name. If you know it's going to align with God's will, you have perfect freedom to speak it and watch that mountain be moved. Go to it. Keep doing it. And that last week, we all want fruit to grow in our lives. Amen? Amen. We all want blessing. We all want God's favor just to be poured out. But fruit only grows on trees that are allowed to be pruned. And we kind of had a little sawzall experience last week. I guess I kind of had to keep that out for you to remember. Some of it hurts. Um, and, and that's okay. Let some things be drawn back. So remember that I talked about that apple tree in our backyard that grew one tree until we pruned it two years ago and, and about this time of year. And then the last fall, it was boom, just popped. Well, I did that. Guys, if you're hunting... Find your apple trees out in your back 40 that nobody ever sees except the deer. And they're starving to death because you didn't prune them. Right? Give them a reason to come by your tree. Well, that, that sounds self-serving. All right, just go feed them. And if you don't hunt, even better, the deer will love you and not be shot at. Okay? Just go out there and trim some trees for them and prune them. I actually did some hardcore pruning on a tree that was back in the woodland behind our house. Ten minutes, I was done. I didn't even try to get up to this, the sprouts because it was like 30 feet up, but I'm not going to die for it. And it just multiplied like probably 10 or 20 or 30 fold because I just pruned some dead stuff. That was just literally just taking the dead stuff. And I'm like, that's definitely dead. See it. What's dead in your life? Did we say goodbye to it this week. I'll guarantee you, some of us heard it last week. We didn't say goodbye to it yet. We're still hugging that thing like it's going to give you something great in the end that it isn't. It's going to steal from you. So, uh, let, me, let me make this more personal. What did you give God to prune last week? Don't, don't shout it out because it might be personal. What did you give him to prune? Did you, did you let him do it? Are you helping him out? Let me give you some examples. What sin did you give him? If you don't give him that sin, that leaves you still bound. That leaves you still leashed. And don't expect any fruit to come about from this. You will not bear fruit while under a yoke of sin. Just not going to happen. Can't happen. You're not operating out of the vine. What sin is killing us? Um, Picture sin as a disease that actually goes to the root of you and is destroying you. If you could see sin for what it really is, an ugly disease that you need surgery and just cut it out. Get it out of there. What is it? 
if you got to write something down today, and if you got to be, you know, somebody's on your left and somebody's on your right, and you don't want them to see exactly what you're doing, be cryptic. That's fine. You know what it is. You know what's going to kind of remind you? I've got to put this check on my computer. I've got to put this to rest. I've got to destroy that avenue into my life. What do you do with something that's sin, it's invasive? What do you do? You, you, here's what I say. Burn the bridge that got you there, right? What's the bridge that got you there? What's the Bible say? If your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. It's not being literal, but it's talking about don't let that be an avenue to hell. Amen? Okay. What pride? What pride need pruning this week? And it might be a different pride from last week. Pride is what caused Lucifer to fall from heaven. Pride. The sin of pride is the original sin. So it's really easy to get pride going and you're better than others. Or you gotta, Lord help us, humility is this way to see fruit and abundance in your life. Amen? All right. What, what judgment needs to be pruned from me, God? For by the measure we judge others, we will be, will be judged. What lack of faith needs pruned from me, God? I want to step into power. What, help thou my unbelief. I remember my dad saying that in prayer a lot. Lord, I believe, but even as much as I believe, help where I don't believe to believe even more. Even my faith comes from you. What lack of integrity? And this, that's a whole sermon, right? What lack of integrity? Where are we cutting corners at work? Where are we spending more time on our cell phone than we are doing our job? Where are we coming late? It's going early. We're taking pens and taking box cutters. What, what, what is a, a level of integrity we can lean into and step up in God and be a representative for Him? What lies? need to be cut off. How about what TV shows? Now, I'm not just saying TV in general. Sometimes, you know, you can find something decent on TV. Good luck. Um, but, um, but even still, you can, you can still find a chip and joy in the game. Yeah, yeah. I can enjoy that. Cool. Quality. They're cool. Christian folks love them. Have another baby, I guess. Um, that boy's doing it. He's having kids. What the world's happening? What TV show maybe are you like, man, I love that show. I know they dropped the, the sexual in the window about 20 times in that show in a 30-hour segment. Or 30-hour segment. Um, if you're watching that long, you got other issues. A 30-minute segment, I mean. Um, do you need that hitting your, hitting your airwaves? Because garbage in, garbage out. You're an incredible computer. And you take enough of that enemy's voice in. You're going to find it easier to say those words. You're going to find yourself thinking sexual innuendos all through the day. Why? Because you took it in. I'm going to ask you, if we would let God prune some of those areas and step up into, not some purist kind of thing for purist's sake. It's to step into a reverent awe of God, an honor of God, and you will find fruit just hanging from your branches. It's going to be awesome. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Video games. Piled high next to you. All the kids went downstairs. Hey guys, get off the video games. Alright, I, I shared my message with them downstairs. You can share it with them later as parents. Feel free to use video games as leverage. Some of you probably already do. Those of you who are having kids, do yourselves a favor. Don't give them a cell phone until they're 20. Alright? All right. That's, yeah. Anyway, so many places we can have the power sucked from our lives. Do you have that picture of the, the tree again, baby? And you got to see that sucker branch down at the bottom, if you can highlight that thing that's coming up. Many trees have multiple bushes of those almost coming up. And you got the water sprouts on the top that are just going up and wasting. And you got dead branches that are wasting. Here's what a tree looks like that's good. Here we go. Uh, actually, it's like before, middle, after. Here we go. This is interesting. So on the left, this is one that needs pruned. Now, mine that need pruned look much worse than this. Anybody with me? 
Oh, yeah. That actually looked fairly decent um, to me. Uh, if I could have found a picture that had a much worse, more conglomerated, twisted, tweaked, cross branches, um, I would have found it, but this is all they gave me on the internet. So um, here's that before pruning. After pruning, what? It, yeah, it's missing some spots, but if you can give me the little laser baby, um, give it back when you're done. I heard that. All right, so I will. I love you. Um, so all these branches, there's a dead branches going down, and you got you got some water sprouts and stuff that obviously they took out of this thing, and they took a lot of center out because it's not getting what it needs in here. There's a lot in you and me that's all wired, crossed. Crisscrossed, and if you got some ADD, it's it's really <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> when I reran the wires underneath the stage, it's awesome that you don't see the wires on the stage now. Well, I have a boo boo right here and a boo boo right there from doing the army crawl back in through here about 17 times, and you ought to see the cords down there now. <laughs> God rest the soul who has to go down and unwind those later. I'm not available when that happens. <laughs> All right? So that's, that's where some of the dead branches went below the stage. That's what we do with them sometimes, though. We still have the, all the crossed up branches, but we're, we're all thinking they're hidden. But they're not. We're just fruitless. Right? And we don't know why. We're not, we're not fruitful because we haven't allowed the pruning of the things that are keeping us from a quality relationship with him. Do you see it? Now, over here, we have something funky happen. And if you read underneath, it says, I have no idea what that, oh, it says, Tap, topping produces dumps of uncontrolled growth. <laughs> dumps. <laughs> <laughs> Could be clumps. <laughs> Call it what it is. It might be a dump. It could be a clump. Now, topping produces, I'm going with dumps of uncontrolled growth. Now, I, and I, I said to my wife, you know, how, that looks like a Parker hairdo over there, actually. <laughs> did we have, did we get topped when we were children? I don't know. What happened there? Maybe our parents cut it too close and boom, it just, we got, you know, Kramer hair going. So, um, this, what is, what is that in your life? Yeah, I think it's what I'm tempted to do when I get out to my trees, and I'm the pruner. I'm just like, hey, that looks way too tiresome and burdensome to have to go up and individually clip all those water sprouts. I say that limb, even though it's alive, you just kill the whole thing, right? Do, do, are you tempted to do that in your life? And, and let me give you some, some example. Um, maybe it's a relationship that you're like, I know if this is a relationship, like it's my spouse, that I'm supposed to, you know, take care of and make adjustments and with care and concern take care of business. And I love the fact that many of you did the Deep Love series. That means you're putting that first. You're trying to make that empathy uh, of understanding your, your loved one a priority. Good job. Keep doing that. As somebody said, keep coming back because we need a refresher every three months, right? But too many are di just getting a divorce. I'm just going to cut the whole thing off because I don't want to take the time and do what it takes to make this thing profitable and, and fruitful and a blessing. There's too many of us in that boat. What, 50% plus in America end up in divorce. Why? Here's what I think. Because we're so selfish that we're not willing to go under the knife and do some pruning so that I can be who I'm supposed to be to her and vice versa. Help us, Jesus. Amen? Amen. Help us. Facebook Live, take it in. All right? There's some that shouldn't be cut back because you're going to have a gnarly mess after that. Now, I want to give you hope after that. God can still undo any mess. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Because we've all done some messy things. We've all cut some things off of the trunk. Um, maybe it's a job you don't like. And you're like, I'm going to just cut this off. And then the next one comes, and you run into a similar situation. I'm going to cut this off. And then you get to the next one. And instead of making tweaks and adjustments and changes in you, that allow God to prune your attitude towards your boss, your attitude. I mean, Joseph, he gets sold into slavery. He gets left by his family. He gets 
cut off at every turn, sold into the, into the prison for something he didn't do. But he still honored God. He still said, prove me. I want to be better. And I'm going to do my best whoever I'm working for. And God put him second in command of all of them. One of the greatest kingdoms in the world at that time. What? Can we get this down in our spirit? It doesn't matter what's happening at your job place. Lord, how do you want me to be the light of Christ in that place? And even though I have a cantankerous boss, if I keep cutting off bosses, you're going to find that you look like that on the far right. Messed up. And no fruit. Because nobody's going to hire you at some point. Is that, is that a good example? Okay. As good as I can do. John 15, verse 1 to 17, if you will with me. John 15, 1 to 17. We already did the first few, so I'm going to fly in the front end. If you can give me those page numbers. 1068. 1068, if I heard that correctly, nope. in your pew Bible. <laughs> Read with me, if you will. I'm going to give this back to my lovely bride. After I change it. To your viewing pleasure. All right, thank you. Verse 1. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Woohoo! Verse 3, you're already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. I love that. Tell your neighbor, you're clean. Go. You're clean. You're clean because of the word God has spoken to you. You've accepted Jesus as your Savior. I am clean. What's that? Woo -hoo! Verse 4. Remain in me. Here's that meno that my wife explained last week. Remain in me and I also in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine, Jesus. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Catch that in your spirit. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Christ. The branch I have over here, uh, got to find a new holder, but that's okay. What's that going to bear? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And there's some things going on in our lives that look a lot like that. And we're like, hmm, why are we keeping that thing around? I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, verse 5, and I am you, you will bear much fruit. Remain is meno, M-E-N-O, in the Greek. And it refers to Jesus holding on to you more than you could ever hold on to him. Right? And I picture it this way in a weld. I do some welding because I have to. Uh, I don't enjoy welding, but I do it. And it's taking two metals and the properties actually merge and become one. And the properties actually mix. It's, maybe it's more like grafting if you're still thinking about the tree analogy. Where a graft comes in and, and, and they mix and they match and they, and, they, and they take on the properties one or the other. And, and I love the fact that it's not just me trying to hang on for dear life. It's that Jesus is holding on to my dear life. Accept that. Receive that. I am the vine, you're the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Um, for an example of that, I just I, I think of uh, a text I might get from some of you that encouraged me just at the right moment. Thank you for your faithfulness. Um, it's kind of like I get fruit from them. Somewhere up here, I got a banana. <laughs> I, it, it can be whatever fruit. There, there's, isn't there a moment in time you're just like, man, about three quarters of the way through the day, you, you miss breakfast, you miss lunch, and, and you come about somebody from church, and they just they, they just got what you need. You know what I mean? They're just like, you got this. Let me pray for you on this. You're not alone. Somebody texts you. Maybe you reach out for, please reach out. 
You got a need. Sometimes we don't know your need, right? Reach out to somebody. Give them a text. I really need some prayer today. I can't be specific. It's too personal. Just reach out. I guarantee you, they're going to cover you. Amen? You're going to cover each other? Amen. All in favor, aye? aye? Yeah, we're doing it. Lend the fruit. It's, what good is the fruit if I'm not sharing the fruit with anyone? Lend it. Be that fruit for somebody that's in this room. And certainly, next week when we talk about it, for somebody that's not in this room. The huge statement again, apart from me, you can do nothing. Is that what? The second half of verse 5. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If we can get that down in our spirit. I think we try to do a lot without you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it. It's about me. In my four, no more. No, Lord, help me to make it. All about you. Apart from you, I am nothing. I can do nothing. Verse 6, if you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such a branch is picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish. It will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Do it. Remain. That's all our job is. I can't make the fruit pop. All I got to do is hang with Jesus. Ask, be in prayer continuously every day. Be involved with letting him fight my battle. Hey, God, you got a battle in sector one? Hey, I've got a battle that my brain's been fighting since somewhere on Friday. And it's a personal one. And most of you, probably none of you know about it except about three of us. I'm not a fan of what I have to live with until the date and time which I find out something. But you know what? The supernatural peace of God transcends all understanding, and He's guarding my heart. And I literally, I don't think I've worried more than about five minutes since Friday. And that's Jesus. Because I'm a natural worry. Or want to hit this before we go. And we hit this in a sermon series way long ago, so long ago, I'm going to just make it a refresher. Because this is personal a little bit more. Since I lose new, learned uh, some news of uh, losing a friend this week that I think was unnecessarily lost. I think he didn't understand that as a human being we have six core longings. I'm going to mention what those core longings are. I believe they're in your, uh, there's a place for that in your outline. Thank you. There's a place for you to write that out. There's six core longings that we just naturally have as human beings. I'm going to share with you what they are. And I'm going to share with you this. If you try to find these core longings in your girlfriend, she's going to let you down. How about the, the young person recently who killed herself because her boyfriend broke up with her? That was a misunderstanding. Your core longings shouldn't have been found in him. They will never be found in him, and he cannot support your core longings. You were not made for him to support your core longings. He can't give it all to you. Jesus can. Jesus alone. Amen? Amen? John chapter 15, we're going to find the fullness that Jesus meets all our core longings. He desires to do so. He's the one equipped to do so because he created you with those core longings. How about trying to find these core longings in America on the weekend? We all got to go out and drink a six-pack. A, I don't know how you drink that much beer in one setting. I couldn't imagine drinking that much water in one setting. And it doesn't do you any good, does it? That's going to leave you failing. Or it's going to leave you, in this case, this week, dead. Why? Take those core longings and don't get them met by your buddies at the bar because they're not going to be met there. They're not going to be met by the alcohol that's meeting. They're not going to be met by the drug that uh, your friends are trying to get you to be induced with, to get you past whatever you're feeling. It's not going to do that. YMCA, fire department, whatever you want to join as a member, not going to get there. Not going to get your core longings met. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Here's the core longings. You have a core longing to be understood that you are significant. You have a core longing for significance. That's just to be valued. You're important. Because somebody understands you have value. You can try to find that in everybody else. You're going to be lost in the side of the curve. But Jesus, he made you. He, you can be more valuable to anybody on the planet 
then to God, then to Jesus, then the Holy Spirit, the three in one, loving you that much. You have a need to be secure. Security is that second one. Anybody uh, lock your car when you got here at the church? I did. I didn't trust any of you walking by my truck. <laughs> I'll get in there and help myself. No, I, I trust all of you. I, I don't. I, I naturally have a mistrust, of, apparently, of, of everything. I, I chided my wife. She left the, the car in our driveway unlocked for the last day and a half. And I said, you what? The, what do you mean the keys are in there? Somebody just stole a bus recently. Go all over creation with it. No, don't leave them out there. Yeah, I got a, yeah, I got security issues. So I take them to Jesus, but I also lock my car. Um, <laughs> security is huge. We want to feel secure. We want to feel safe. Amen. We need to feel safe. And there's so many things that come at you that feel unsafe. Guess what? As we read this passage to close in a few seconds, you're going to find there's security in Jesus. There's all, all kinds of thank. You want eternal security? There's the only place you're going to find it. You want the rock who created the rock and the heavens and all there is? There it is, security. Understanding is that third one. Understanding. Everybody wants to be understood, right? Yep. A, a deep love course that we're in right now, that's a huge part of it. We're, we're working on empathy and understanding that, oh, I didn't realize you see it that way, baby. Now that I understand that, we are going to have a little better relationship here. Amen? We're going we're gonna to get somewhere we haven't been. Understanding. There's nobody who understands you any more than God does. And do you, it's why he came and suffered on the cross and did what he did so that he knew exactly what humans felt like. It's easy to say, well, you're God. You have no idea what it's like to be stuck in this. Oh, yeah? You can't say that to him, can you? He went to the cross and suffered the most inhumane death of all time. He knows. He understands what you're feeling. Love is that third, fourth one. He loves you. That is evident all through this passage. It's evident all through every passage that he is in love with you. Do you love your ch your children, your kid? Ooh, depends on the day. Um, <laughs> don't share that, Caleb. <laughs> I love you, man. It's the other two. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. So I tell you, as much as I love my kid, can't come to a end of a needle of what God loves us, created in his image, in the likeness. Purpose. You're going to find that purpose is all over this passage because uh, it's about that fruit. It's about bearing fruit. It's about being fruitful. It's about why are we doing what we're doing? Purpose. We all need a purpose. Um, there's some people in my life that had, had a really structured purpose and now that's kind of taken away. And you almost see them quickly dying without purpose. Hey, without a vision, we die. There's, a, there's the biblical support of it, if you will. Keep your vision in Christ alone. Keep coming to him. He'll give you the vision. See, that the vision will be the fruit of just spending time with him. Just being quiet. I'm still trying to get this down. I'm with you. It's not easy, but it is. But it's almost too easy. But it's hard. But it's really not that hard if I come back to easy. Just lost half of you. Here we go. Belonging. Belonging. And, and I actually memorized this. And if you take this, these core longings, belongings, that last one, and I memorize it this way. I just remember the first letter of each word. S-S-U-L-P-B. And I did that long enough to do it. S-S-U-L-P-B. 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 Significance, security, understanding, love, purpose, belonging. Because my wife has it on a hand for her handouts. <laughs> and uh, I remember I, I think we struggle with feeling like, do I belong? I mean, even at church when you walk in, right? You wonder, do I belong? Am I wearing the right clothes? Will people talk to me? Am I important enough for them to pause and look? 
and see. We all feel that need to belong. There's no greater belonging than Jesus shouting out in this passage we're about to read. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. He's getting to the point. Yeah. For salvation, you ended up choosing me. Amen. But from the creation of the world, I chose you. I'm madly in love with you. I was just waiting for you to figure it out. And come and have a relationship with me. So I'm going to have you close your eyes a moment, if you will. If you need to put your head down and, and look at those core longings that you just wrote down. And kind of filter through where you feel one of those connects with the words I'm reading. I'm not going to try to connect them to anything. I'm just going to read this to you. These core longings are found only in Jesus. Jesus says to you in verse 9 of the passage we've just been reading. I'm just continuing on. Your head's bowed. Maybe you're looking at those core longings. Here we go. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. Just remain in my love. Come and listen. If you will keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commands, and I remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be complete in you, and your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. For greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants. Because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my father, I've made known to you. You did not choose me. Oh, but I chose you. And I've appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last eternal. And so whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Lord, I pray right now that you would minister to our, our brokenness. The times that we've tried to find all our core longings in everything else but you. And it always left us empty because it cannot serve those core longings. Only you can. My spouse can give me some of this or all of this in part. But she cannot be a replacement of you. For she will let me down. And I will let her down. Lord, I pray that if I find all my core longings met in you, and I come to you when I need security, instead of going and finding it somewhere else where I'm going to be more broken, then I'm going to find myself in a very secure place with you. Then I can be secure and have the fruit of security for somebody who comes to me and says, hey, I need some help with security. Lord, I pray that we get all of these found and met only in you. And then we will know our purpose. The fruit will naturally be there. Because it's all you. Help us to know our significance. Our understanding comes from you. The deepest love that could ever exist in the universe is yours. And purpose and belonging, they're kind of like this bonus thing that comes from time spent with you. And the more I am with you, the less I need somebody else's approval, the less I need to meet somebody else's agenda. I just need to meet yours. And I'm already approved and loved and belong. And I fully commit to you. So Lord, I pray that there's committing that happens right now. A new spirit of commitment that says, I need you. 
Come and meet all these longings that are mixed up in me. And prune me. And make me effective. With your head still bowed and eyes closed, just a moment. If this morning you say, hey, there's a couple areas I've been trying to find. One or some of those core longings in another place. I'd like you just to raise your hand and say, this morning, I'm realizing, amen. 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 Any more? I want to give you another chance. Oh, I, yeah. Amen. Amen. Lord, I pray for those that, hey, we didn't risk anything by raising our hand. We're just saying, I need, I need to find that longing being met in you, Jesus. Because you'll never leave me nor forsake me. Lord, I pray that for each one of those, and maybe those on Facebook Live who are like, oh, I'm trying to find it in all the wrong places. Jesus, help us to realize it's you. You meet them all, and you exceed them all. The closer I am to you, the less I get rattled, the less I'm in turmoil, the more I can give output and actually feel good about it. God, do something powerful <laughs> in each one of these lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.